Samuel. Okay, so, Mr. Samuel, is Lagos the land of opportunity? Land of opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. Everything is sellable in Lagos. The only person I think can go hungry in Lagos is a lazy person. Wow, fantastic. If you are not lazy, you can never go hungry in Lagos. My name is Kayode Samuel. Okay, so Mr. Kayode, thank you for the audience you gave us. Please, we just want to talk about, we want your opinion, because mm, it will go a long way. Sir, do you think Lagos is a land of opportunities? Uh, Lagos is a land of opportunity for those that have that initiative, that can discover it as, oh, let me find one thing to do. And if you don't find one thing to do, as someone living or, or, or be a Lagosian, you may remain like that. But it's, an, it's, a, it's a land of uh, uh, it's a land of sources and it's a land of opportunity for someone that can discover. Because the others say when you discover, you recover. Yeah, the youth of nowadays we are parading. Majority of them are lazy, which I agreed. But you of them are not taking the bull by the horn, understand? And they are not ready to sacrifice. They are not ready, you know, to work hard, understand? It's only a few of them, understand, that sees that okay, I need to do my own part. I need to ensure that okay, uh, I, I, I achieve my, you know, my aims and my objective, understand? Now, in the part of the uh, elders, I will not say elders. I will say government in particular. Also, government is to be blamed because they are not putting enabling environment for the you to operate, yes, sir. So you cannot put the blame and harder fully on youth or fully on the on the adult, yes, sir. So everybody have his own role to play, yes, sir, because to for you to achieve something. But by and large, like that, let me just summarize it is that there is no way you know the government can you know you know provide the employment for all the youth, yes, sir, everybody, yes, sir. So which you yeah, the youth start looking at ways of you know you know uh, create, be creative and see how they can you know uh, you know do something you know, apart from the father you went to school or whatever try to do something you know, vocational things or something that creates that you know that will make you to employ people like yourself you understand so it's very very important because by the time and look at the kind of uh, and Nigeria also is a we are a consuming nation you understand we are not producing you understand so definitely we have the uh, issue of unemployment after some time you understand and the population is rising every day Yes, sir. So there is no way the unemployment will, uh, unemployment will not arise. But you, as yourself, you know, oh, fine. I could not get a job. Let me look at something else to do. Talking about un unemployment, I think each and every one of us is to be blamed for the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria. Why do I say so? We keep pushing the blame on governments. Government is this, government is that. Yes, even on paper, we are supposed to have three tiers of governments, the federal, state and local government. But in practice, it doesn't work that way. Why? Because of selfishness of some certain individual. Personal interest. Number one, we are not patriotic in this country. If there is any... any if you have to give a figure, I think less than 10 percent of Nigerians are patriotic. We are insulting those that are there now because we are not privileged. Believe me, when you and I are privileged, we might actually do worse than what they are doing. Yes. Please, what's your name? Kenneth Ikenwa is my name. Oh, Mr. Kenneth Kenwa, uh, thank you for your time. Um, so we want to ask you some questions. And one of it is about the situation in Nigeria. And then we must have sincerity of purpose. Government sets up a bank. I'm not going to mention any bank now, so I don't give them undue advertisement or advertising. Now, people, how many common people can actually have access to such banks to borrow petty loans? 100,000, 200,000 to run their businesses, all right? But those who have connections with those at the top can easily come to those banks and get those loans. And for the most part, some of them don't even get paid back. And then you are saying we're going to have we're having financial problems. So until we are sincere with our policies, until we practice a democracy and practice governance that is based on the interest of the peoples, not just people. You can't, for instance, say okay because you belong to one you know one state or one tribe in the country, you have more access to resources. Everybody, 
all the peoples should have access to those resources. And then you find out that when one person from one particular segment of society is making it, he will lift others up. Like my very good small friend Davido would usually say, <laughs> he will you, you you rise by lifting other people up. And until we get that right, we 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 will still be in utopia and in limbo as it were. And also government to some extent they're also doing a little a little thing because I'm a I'm a digital informed person. You understand? Now government is giving a lot of grants. How many youth knows about this? Yes, they are not informed. You understand? Because they are not informed because they are not, you know, they don't go extra mile to know what are other things government are doing. People are some people that are taking loans. That put about when you don't have what it takes, the requirement for you to take loan. You understand? Nobody will give you a loan. You don't. You didn't go to school. You didn't have that uh, requires. Uh, no, 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 no. That's some loan that are not even collateral. You understand? But yourself, they, they must see that okay. You are ready, yes, sir, to, you know, like I, like I, like I said, you know, look around, yes, sir. Many people believe that they don't want to take a step. They don't want to get rich. Rich is not automatic. Yes, sir. You can see most youth now, yes, sir, because of what they are seeing. Other people just make money, corruption and other stuff, go into a whole sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, activity that is, uh, that is against the law, yes, sir. They don't believe that, why am I struggling? And some of them, their lifestyle, they want to live a lifestyle that, so what do you know you, you, to achieve in, in five, ten years? You want to achieve it within the where within within so it's not done. With the role of government yeah. in yeah. empowering yeah. agriculture. But the issue that many how many youths, yes, even you ask to go to the farm. Will you will you want to work in the farm? No. Everybody wants quick money. So everything is back, back that nobody wanted to, you know, systematically grow. Yes, you just want to uh, you know uh, 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 venture into something that does today and tomorrow you want to become a millionaire. Yes, sir. So if you start looking at that, we cannot progress. Let's talk about culture and moral, moral decadence. How can we beat both together? Does culture empower morality? Is it that we abandoned our culture and then we embraced another kind of culture? And then, what do you feel? Can, can, does culture have a role in morality? Um, or has a place in moral decadence or preservation? Of it's been long I left school. <laughs> but I think culture has to do with your way of life. Then, what is moral? I think moral is subjective. It's subjective. What might be moral to you? <laughs> moral, to, according to you, might be different from moral according to me. So I think let's stick with culture because in Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria, in, in inside inside Nigeria, you can marry a child of twelve. Yes, in the northern part is allowed, but you can't do that in the south. So that's why I said it's subjective. So let deal with let, let this on culture. Growing up, I'm still a small boy, but the little uh, morals, what we taught at home then was. Uh, Yoruba will say, Ishe ni ogu ishe. So that, uh, that when you walk, you eat. That's been of that, Ishe ni ogu ishe. And then they don't appreciate this quick money syndrome. Yeah. No, not, don't let me say Yorubas. Yoruba is a nation of how many million people? Let me say my household. Because if everybody is from my household, I think our, the level of moral decay now is not going to be there. It wounds. So let me just say my personal household. So where then when we go to school, primary school, secondary school, and you bring in what doesn't belong to you, you'll be questioned. Where did you get this thing from? I, I think personally as Nigerians, we don't even we don't hail our own. Do you understand? Culture is culture. Like someone will say, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You being the culture itself, you can still be cultural, you, you might still have have the instincts on the fact that okay, I'm from this particular society. Let me do what is expected of me when it comes to that society. Then so Western culture, you know we like farms in their broad people. We feel they are superior to us. So I feel really we feel they are superior. Yeah, yeah I what think um, I don't know. Now it's you can't see now everybody that is going to abroad, we tell them that ah, they are very successful, even though we don't know what they are doing there. Do you garbage man? Oh yeah. So I think yeah, that's it. So.